Hey guys, welcome to Medifaction. Today, let's learn about trachoma. So, trachoma is also known as chronic keratoconjunctivitis. They are primarily affecting the superficial epithelium of the conjunctiva and cornea with mixed follicular and papillary responses. They also cause panis formation. What is panis formation? It is nothing but the extension of vasculature into an organ. And also later it causes cicatrization, otherwise scar formation. Etiology The causative organism for trachoma is chlamydia trachomatis. And they produce intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies known as the HP bodies. They consist of 12 serovers. Now let's see the predisposing factors. For trachoma, they are more affected in females than men's. They are more prone in dry and dusty weather. And they are also more prone among the low socioeconomic status. Source The main source for trachoma is conjunctival discharge of affected person. Modes of spread The more common cause of spread is direct spread which is through vector flies or even through material transfer. Prevalence They are more common in North Africa, Middle East and Southeast Asia region. Now let's see the clinical features. Before moving into the clinical features, we should understand that there are two major phases. The first phase is the phase of active inflammatory trachoma. In case of active inflammatory trachoma, they are more common among the childhood, which has an incubation period of 7 to 14 days, and the mode of onset is insidious or subacute in nature. Now let's see the symptoms of active inflammatory trachoma. In the absence of secondary bacterial infection, the main symptoms are mild foreign body sensation, occasional lacrimation, slight thickness of the lids, and also scanty mucoid discharges. Whereas in the presence of secondary bacterial infection, the symptoms may differ which is there will be mild photophobia or colored halos and also slight vision blurring and also since it's having a bacterial infection there will be mucopurulent discharge. Now let's move on to the signs. The major congenital signs are congestion of tarsal and fornicil. This part right here is the tarsal area and there will be also presence of conjunctival follicles. So what are these conjunctival follicles? These are appeared due to the aggregation of lymphocytes in the adenoid layer and also the central part of the follicles has mononuclear histiocytes. Another important part is the presence of labor cells and signs of necrosis because these are exclusive sign of trachoma follicles and it is very much important in the diagnostic area. Next we have papillary hyperplasia because the papilla will have blood vessels and lymphocytes giving red velvety appearance to tarsal conjunctiva as you can see right here. Next see the corneal signs. In case of cornea, there will be superficial keratitis over the upper part. Also, there will be presence of Herbert follicles at the limbus. This junction right here is known as the limbus and there will be follicles known as Herbert follicles. This right here is the superficial keratitis over the upper part of the cornea. Next, we will be having progressive panis between the epithelium and the Bowman's membrane. Also, corneal ulcer at edge of the panis will be appreciated. So, we have completed the first phase. Now, let's move on to the next phase, 
that is the face of chronic cicatricial trachoma. This is more common among the middle aged people and because of recurrent infection in this case there will be chronic immune response that is cell mediated type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. Here the signs will be slightly different. In here in the conjunctival sign we can appreciate scarring. Due to the scarring there will be a white line formation known as the ALTS line. Also concretions will be present. How these concretions are present? The concretions are hard looking whitish deposits which are due to dead epithelial cells at the glands of Henle. Now let's see the corneal signs. Here there will be regressive panels because the vessels extend beyond the area of infiltration. Also there will be Herbert pits which can be appreciated right here. So the Herbert pits are nothing but the scars left after healing the Herbert follicles. There will be also corneal opacity. Moving on to the lid signs. In lid signs we have first of all the trichiasis. Trichiasis is nothing but here you can appreciate right here we have the eyelashes touching over the eyeball. Also we have entropion otherwise known as the rolled in eyelid. The eyelid will be rolled inwards. Then we have tylosis which is also called as thickening of the lid margin and tosis which means the drooping of eyelid. Now let's move on to the classification. The classification is based on WHO. First of all we have the trachomatous inflammation folliculus. It is named so because it has the predominant follicular inflammation at the upper tarsal conjunctiva. Next we have the trachomatous inflammation intense. In here, there will be inflammatory thickening at the upper tarsal which obscures more than half of the normal blood vessels. Next, we have trachomatous scarring. Here, we can appreciate the scarring in the tarsal conjunctiva leading to whitish bands or sheet-like structures. Next, we have trachomatous tracheasis. As I have mentioned earlier, it's because of the eyelash rubbing against the eyeball and in case of trachomatous tracheasis, at least one eyelash will be rubbing over the eyeball. Next is corneal opacity which is due to corneal scarring. Now let's see the complications of trachoma. The one and only major complication is the corneal ulcer. And the corneal ulcer is due to the rubbing by concretions or tracheasis with bacterial infections. Now let's move on to the lab diagnosis. First of all, we have the conjunctival cytology. Here, by using the GMCI stain, we can appreciate polymorph nuclear reaction with presence of plasma and labor cells. Next, we have the detection of inclusion bodies. This can be done with the help of either gemcia stain, iodine stain or even immunofluorescence stain. Also other lab diagnosis includes ELISA because through this process we can detect the chlamydial antigen. PCR can also be done and also we can isolate the chlamydia using yolk sac inoculation. Now let's see the final part which is the treatment. In case of anti-inflammatory trachoma, we can use certain antibiotics such as azithromycin 20 mg per kilogram as single oral dose, erythromycin can be administrated 250 mg 4 times a day for 14 days, doxycycline can be given 100 mg twice a day for 10 days and also tetracycline ointment can also be given twice a day for 6 weeks. In case of secretarial trachoma, artificial tears can be suggested such as 1% carboxymethyl cellulose 
and surgical treatment can be applied in case of congenital seculae or congenital cirrhosis or in even in case of eyelid seculae and corneal scarring. Hope you understood the video. Like, subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. Thank you. Thanks for listening.